Hello, my name is Reagan Tausch. Welcome to my studio. I'm a folk artist and uh, this is a work in progress. This is um, one of my favorite subjects, horses. I love horses. I worked with them for years and uh, I keep my easel here and my paints ready to go so anytime I have time or inspiration I come right to it and paint. And I basically, I start right on the canvas. I hardly sketch at all, unless it's like a large scene. And I'll start at the sky and I'll block in the sky and I'll block in all the different layers of the fields and the barn and I'll just block in the big spaces first, let that dry, or if I'm impatient, I might use a hair dryer. And then I'll go back in and then I'll like place in the mountains, for example, and then I'll do the trees, I'll start putting in the trees with their little details and I like to mix up the colors so they're fun and fun for the eyes like eye candy and then I keep working my way down layer by layer like that and I'll I'll say at that point I would block in the barn like all the white and uh, the roof and then go back and later and work on the barn doors and um, the uh, details and then I would come in and I would kind of put it, I would know I want the fence here, but I would probably save that till a little later on so I get those lines just perfect. I'd probably like block in the horses and the big trees. And I just keep, every time I have another layer done, it's like layers, and then I'll go back in and I'll start from the top and go back down and I'll say do the first layer of the clouds. Sometimes they even have two layers. And maybe do some more details on the trees because there's so many details that I have to go back often and do more. And then even like details like on this tree here, I'll even take my glasses off and give an example in a sec. Uh, this tree, I, I take, um, I make sure that I do the details and I'll, where it's dark, I'll put light so that you can actually see it without having to think about it. Uh, I did the thinking, so it just looks like a full tree rather than if it was dark on dark, you wouldn't even see it and it would look like I forgot to paint part of the tree. I'm afraid camera was not able to catch the detail. Oh, oh okay. sorry. <laughs> All right. So, and, um, and, and then I'll just keep going layer by layer. At that point, once I have the trees blocked in, the horses where they are, I'll start doing the fence very carefully. I sometimes use a ruler so that I don't stand back and go, oh my gosh, it's all crooked. Looks like a hurricane went through. And, uh, and that, even the fence would take a couple layers. I'd have to go back and do a couple layers. And, uh, and I just keep going. And uh, usually a painting this size could take me weeks to paint. Weeks. And um, let's see, what else? How oh, do you decide check. what goes into it? How do I? Um, I get inspired. Often I get inspired by a memory. I've worked with a lot of horses at a lot of barns in a lot of different places. And often I'll get inspired by a memory. Like this is kind of like a barn I used to work at when I was in my 20s. And I, I, um, I do the horses doing things that they would have been doing when I worked with them, nuzzling each other or playing in the field or eating or kind of checking out what's on the Everybody wants to see what's on the other side of the fence, right? And uh, a lot of times I'll also, I get inspired just by going out on my walk. Like I've done paintings of local boats or uh, a lot of beach scenes, I get inspired, it just, it, it strikes me and it makes me feel happy and then I want to go home and produce it and I want to make art and I want to create it and share it with the world and, uh, and I'm always trying to reach my, uh, my desired level of art and I always have kind of a goal like if it's not just right I'll, I'll redo it till it's just the way I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then if I'm satisfied, then it's ready for the world. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which I often I'll look at it with a micro, I'll look at look at it with a magnifying glass even sometimes, and just like this one's not done yet, so it's not necessary. But just for example, I would actually look at it uh -huh. and make sure that you could look at this thing with a magnifying glass, because I want it to be that good. Wow. I want whoever owns this painting to be filled with joy every time they look at it, to see something new every time they look at it, and to go wow, and then. If they can do that, then I might be satisfied. <laughs> and that this is basically my my paints, and I keep this going. I clean it every couple of days so it doesn't get too icky. And this is acrylic, yes. And this is acrylic paints. I use these liquid acrylics, and I like muted colors. I, I steer away. They're um, they're more peaceful, and I steer away from the primaries. And um, and kind of every color I have, you might notice, probably almost has a little blue in it. I'll never ever in my life get tired of the color blue. I love almost every shade of blue there is. And I love to use blue. And I, blue makes me feel 
has gives me a certain feeling and so I like to share that and get that across in my art so I'm gonna show you how I do my little details with this very very tiny is brush. this your thinnest brush this is my thinnest brush and I go through these more quickly than the others because once those five or ten bristles go there's nothing left and then I just go right in, tear, in here and I'm like going to do some grass for you so up here needs a little grass and I just basically get my face right up in there I see better without my glasses near up close anyway not far away and I just do I make sure they're going in the right direction and I just kind of space them out so they all look kind of interesting and fun and I, I just keep going like that and uh, and then when I'm about 95, 99% done I probably will sign it because that's kind of a lot of work too because I'm very careful how I sign my painting. I started in a very neat manner so I always kind of want to keep it consistent. Of so, course. And then I usually do a couple teeny tiny details even after I sign it and then, it, then it's done and I often I'll also kind of just keep it for a few days or a week or more and just kind of look at it a lot. Not look at it for a few days and then look at it again just so I know I didn't miss anything or there's nothing I wouldn't want to change because after you get away from something for a few days and get back to it you notice things differently. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's how I paint all the time. And uh, I get a lot of joy out of it. I feel very blessed doing it, and I, I like to share that with people. And I love the feedback I get from people. I love what people get out of my paintings. Sometimes it's a surprise to me what they see in my paintings, and I'll never get tired of that either, uh -huh. that or blue. Uh -huh. They are very peaceful and very, very tranquil. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and there's never too much of that in the world, is there? And, like, here's, a, here's another painting that mm -hmm. I... This is a work in progress. I often I'll start paintings and sometimes I'll get tired of them or sometimes I have a custom so I put them on the side and I get back to them a little later. This obviously I was inspired walking along the bay in my town. This is very much what I would see if I was walking along the bay in my town. I just added a few extra flowers and um, and this has a lot of details still to do. I'm going to have a lot of details on the blanket on the beach and there'll be more people and things going on. Uh -huh. And, uh, it does look tranquil though. Yeah, it's it's fun. I like to get in a lot of things. It's uh, some of my paintings are almost a little bit like a quilt, which I've dabbled in quilting a little bit, where the different spaces in the painting and the different layers have different patterns on them and different colors and uh, something I like to try to have contrast so, so things stand out so your eyes don't have to work too hard basically if I have to work too hard to look at it to see it then you have to work too hard to look at it to see it and I'm not happy that's what I want this is a peaceful thing this isn't work when you have one of these paintings or look at these paintings it's not about straining your eyes it's about the thing kind of bouncing out, out, out at you which is exactly why I would make this a lighter green in front of the the roof so that it stands out so you don't have to work. I did the work. Correct. correct. <laughs> I did the work for you. It's a very nice effect. Yes. I think another company has yes. used that slogan. Uh -huh. And also you know in this uh, beach scene it's mm -hmm. very nice that you have actually made a uh, sea curvy. It's not straight so yeah. uh, there's a little bit of a departure from the usual but yeah. then you have this rhythm in the in the, the grass. You're yes. very nice. And I, I, I don't know if I've always thought of it as a rhythm, but I love that you noticed it like that. Yeah, I, there's um, a symmetry to it. It just, I mean, it just couldn't be flat. I mean, that wouldn't be very creative. My, my artistic self just has to have all these different curves, and I'm not sure exactly. Sometimes people point out to me what they see, and I go, well, that's true. I didn't even realize that's not uh -huh. what I was going for, and that's there too. Uh -huh. And it's all pretty neat. And yeah. um, I'm very, very blessed to do yeah. this art, and it's it's all happy stuff. It's really it's really good, and, um, uh -huh. uh, and, and I keep doing it. Yeah, and you have a winter scene and here. Then, yes. This is a winter scene. This is actually of my own house that I did to keep. Mm -hmm. well, I do Let's put it on an easel as well. Oh, or okay. closer sure. to it. Right. Oh, just oh, if you could hold it. Okay, I'll, I'll just it. hold it. I'll hold just, it here. It's a little bit better light. Is this better? Yeah, okay. great. Wow. So this is actually of my house. This is my little gray one-story house with the cute French doors and snow scenes. I love painting snow scenes. I love doing like a horse and carriage kind of thing in the snow. 
but I love the, doing the white trees with the dark blue background and the snowman. It's something so cozy about the snow. And uh, possibly it could also be because there's a lot of blue there. Uh -huh. uh, it's and the stone very, wall. Very joyful. So I, I enjoyed this painting a lot, and it's fun for me to have one of my own that I actually keep. And it's mm -hmm. kind of fun because I usually sell them and don't get to keep them forever. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, nice. And this is actually kind of, I put my kids in there when they were a little younger. They're playing in the snow too, mm -hmm. so that's fun. This is beautiful. And also, and then the frame, like this is an example of how you can like take an unframed painting you buy. And, you know, you don't have to just take a simple little frame. You can take like, you can get a really, this was a custom made frame that I bought from a company. It has a linen liner and then a, a lovely wooden frame. So... It just like really showcases it, it, it and yeah. really kind of brings it up a whole nother level and Beautiful. it just you could get the frame to match your furniture or whatever you like and yeah. and it just is like just really good it's better than just a plain old frame actually my mom pointed that out to me years ago she goes, you have to use liners and mats and things and she was right so mom's uh -huh. always right so. yeah. <laughs> uh, Reagan thank you so very much it's most interesting very beautiful oh thank you so much this is such a pleasure I love having people in my studio. It's so much it's so much fun to share. Uh-huh. Thanks. Just, oh, okay. Thank you.